Do you want to create a cool animation scene but have no idea where to start? Well, I'm the Bean, and I'm gonna break down this 48 second Spider-Verse animation that I've created in a time span of 4 months. If you haven't seen it, it's the first link in the description. Go check it out and come right back. I'm gonna break down how I did it in 5 steps which you can also apply in your big animation projects. But how did this all start? On the 3rd of April, I sat down and watched Across the Spider-Verse. And honestly, without exaggerating, it was beyond anything I've ever seen. The colors, the composition, each frame looked like it was hand-delivered by the universe itself. That combined with the story and emotions really brought me to tears. There wasn't one single pixel that I didn't absolutely adore in this movie. It literally blew my mind. So uh, yeah, you know, it was pretty good. Now I wanted to see how close I could get to the stunning graphics the artists achieved in this movie. My 3D software of choice was Blender. Yep, it's free, and you can do it too. There was one problem though. Like many key things in this project, I've never done character animation before. So I gave up and never returned again. Just kidding! The days right after I watched the movie, I started practicing. And my third animation test actually looked pretty solid. With my motivation levels being high, I began planning a bigger animation. Little did I know that my motivation levels were about to fall. So with that, let's jump into step one, planning and storyboarding. <sighs> Hello. From the beginning on, I knew how I wanted the style to look. I wanted to implement halftones, bandit dots and hatching in the highlights and shadows, color separation when something is supposed to be out of focus, smears, line work, stylized impact frames, panels, captions, stylized shading and lots of other stuff. It was a lot to keep in mind, so I used the free software Purev to have an overview of my style and what kind of compositions I was going for. I dragged and dropped screenshots and concept art from the Spider-Verse movies and it honestly really helped. It was better to keep a style in mind while storyboarding, so I wouldn't have to change up too much later in the process. Then I started sketching out some basic shot ideas and tried creating a nice composition where I could. After about a week I came up with these 16 shots for which I've created preview frames in 3D. That, by the way, really helped me in the animation process. I also managed to time them to the music I wanted to use. It's crucial to take your time with this step, since it's the foundation of what's coming up next. So now you've got your whole shot list in mind and you're opening up a brand new Blender project. Your motivation is high and you're ready to jump right in. Where do you start? First, I did a city block out for a better orientation in the scene. I added large cubes as placeholders for the buildings Miles interacts with. Then I brought in my rigged Spider-Man model from Gumroad. I'll leave a link in the description. I started the animation on the rooftop. Since it was kinda time to the music, I added the mp3 file to the Blender sequencer and enabled the waveform. Then I added markers to the most important beats. A big thing that helped me was reference footage that I've recorded. That definitely made my job easier with the small details. I also tried recording a reference for when he's jumping off the roof, but, you know... For the swinging part, I parented the rig to an empty, which I animated along a curve. Then I did the rotation of the empty. An important thing to know is that while he's flying in the air, the rotation speed and direction aren't changing until an outside force interacts with Miles. That could be a web he shoots or a building he directly makes contact with. After animating the empty, I went into pose mode with Miles' rig selected and animated every bone from the torso outwards. So I first went in and did the hip, then the chest and head, then the legs and arms and finally the fingers. If a bone isn't animated for a longer period of time, you can select that bone, go into the graph editor and add some noise modifiers. I recommend to decrease the strength and increase the scale. Then restrict the frame range and you're done. It's a really great way to add some extra movement to your character. Now when you're animating, it's important to keep two forces in mind. The gravitational and the centrifugal force. Yep, I looked that up. <laughs> the gravitational force is important for the general position of our character. When he falls without any webs, he would move down at a constantly increasing speed that won't change unless he shoots a web or, well, 
hits the ground. Centrifugal force applies when he swings around a building similar to a swing carousel, pulling the character outward. An example for that is when he pushes himself away from this building. I animated his legs rotating the opposite side of the web's direction. So in general, just keep physics in mind. If you want to get deeper into animating Spider-Man swinging, Peter Franz has a wonderful three-part tutorial series that I would highly recommend. <laughs> oh, you bootylicious Spider-Man. You surely have noticed that in Spider-Verse, some characters, including Miles, are animated on twos, meaning he changes poses every second frame. I tried replicating this, but I made a crucial mistake that I don't want you to repeat. It technically worked, but the animation looked laggy because key poses were missing. Key poses are crucial to convey motion, and if you're animating at 24 FPS and then delete every second frame, you might lose important key poses. That makes the animation feel as if it has some actual missing frames that should be there, aka laggy. To avoid this, set the scene frame rate to 12 FPS, animate, then switch back to 24 FPS, and scale up your keyframes by the factor of 2. Then apply the stepped interpolation modifier. Whew, that was a lot, and it will take a lot of trial and error to get there. But believe me, it will absolutely be worth it. And now we come to the biggest mistake I made during this animation. Do you see all those assets? The buildings, the skyscrapers, the hydrants, the lights, the church, the traffic, the the people, building, the 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 No! With the exception of the cars, I created all the assets myself. All the models, all the textures, all the materials. Everything from scratch! It took me days and weeks to create them, to the point where I implemented my frustration into the textures. Do you want to know the number of hours this process took from me? You don't. Believe me, you don't. 120 hours! Ah! 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 I was burned out and at my lowest point. And you know what? You don't even see 90% of them in the final result. But okay, let me tell you how I made some of those assets. For the modeling, I used a lot of reference and basically just replicated the simple geometry. For the texturing though, I used two methods. The first one was going into Blender's texture paint mode and trying to paint some similar shapes like in the movie. The second method was going into Photoshop and creating a number of tileable textures that I can then recolor in Blender to give some more variation. As you probably could have already told, I've never done texturing before, but since all the objects and buildings are flying by so fast, I think it's sufficient. While I created all those textures, I added a ton of easter eggs, which were actually really fun to create and are kind of my signature on this animation. You by the way don't have to do this. You could just go online and download free models from Sketchfab or Tobosquid and maybe alternate the textures a little bit to give a more stylized look. Why did I do it this way? Because I'm a psychopath. Moving on, next up, lighting. The lighting is my favorite part of the whole thing, and is also the final step we do in Blender. But you can also mess this part up very easily. It's important to know where to place your lights. In general, you want to read the silhouette of your character very easily, so it's easier for the eye to follow and to understand the motion. You can do that by creating a value or color contrast, like for example right here. The background is bright and blue, and Miles is dark and red. Volumes with a slight emission strength really helped me with this step. This is especially important if you can't put anything out of focus, like for example in this animation. You can also take advantage of edge lighting, so your subject stands out even more. Since I wanted to go for a similar style like in the movie, I created a shader that can be rendered out in Eevee, which stylizes the gradient of the edge light. For more close-up shots, I even added a halftone pattern. You also want to have a color harmony. I roughly use this spectrum of colors in my animation, excluding the stylized pop frames. If you use too many or too few colors, it mostly won't look any good. The last thing I did before rendering was doing the webs. I won't really get into too much detail, but I basically used the mixture of animating fully 2D and simulating them in Blender. For the rendering, I separately put all the passes I wanted on different render layers, so I could composite them all together to have more control over the final look. The passes included the mispass, pass, a pass with and without miles, the highlights and Eevee, and some other elements on their own. So now it was time to render. Whoa, whoa, what the hell? Ooh. 
Why are you the way that you are? Honestly, every time I try to do something fun or exciting, you make it not that way. For compositing, I used After Effects. But you can also use free alternatives like DaVinci Resolve for most of the stuff. You usually do the final touches that add a lot of difference in this stage. Ah. I first added all the render layers together, then did a color grade and some vignetting, which basically means darkening the image's edges to guide the focus towards the middle. The mist pass was used to create a brighter fog in the background when needed. After all of those things, I added the stylized elements like the bende dots and the hatching. And this was done very easily. I simply used the render as a luma mat, which basically means that the layer will only show up in the bright parts of the image and not in the dark ones. With some curve adjustments and blurring for the bende dots, the effect was done. For the color separation, I used the 3D glasses effect and selected the mist pass as the luma mat layer. I won't go over all the effects since this breakdown is really straightforward. For all the smear frames and line work, I animated it in 2D using the Procreate app on my iPad. With the same app, I did all the sky map paintings, which I then color corrected and dragged in to match the scene. For the pop frame, I used Photoshop and painted some random shapes with different brushes to get the look I wanted. Then I exported the different layers, put them into After Effects and checked this button to make it a 3D layer. And then I animated a 3D camera moving towards it to give a cool effect. Simple, but effective. And finally, I exported all the 16 shots into Premiere Pro, where I did the sound design. And yeah, that's basically it. In total, I roughly spent 300 hours on this animation, which is another reason why I have infinitely respect for the animators who work on Across the Spider-Verse, because it truly is amazing. I hope you've learned something in this breakdown, and I'll see you in the next one.